But while many districts have the ability to hold classes remotely, about one in five schools in Indiana do not. Among those searching for a potential, potential solution is Monroe Gregg School District in Monrovia. My colleague Brock Turner has more on the challenges rural schools face amid growing coronavirus concerns. While there aren't any confirmed cases in the district, they are keeping a close eye on the situation. Avon, which has multiple confirmed COVID-19 cases, is less than half an hour away. While it was initially a surprise to have the virus so close, the district says it's taking the threat seriously. This is an ever-evolving process because, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that, um, that, that Avon had to put a plan in place pretty quickly. I, I think you're... Our plan for dealing with it now, as it stands, having no students or staff or adults or anyone in the community affected by this virus, I'm happy with the plan that we have in place. Monroe Gregg Schools teacher and communications coordinator Mark Janes says the district's maintenance and custodial staffs are already taking steps to ensure spaces stay clean. That's along with providing more wipes and sanitizers, but he says it's hard not to be reactive. Clearly, this coronavirus uh, has caused most of the world to be reactive because most of the world was ill prepared for this. Um, but I think, you know, um, we have a, a pretty effective team in place that's going to look at, okay, how will athletic events be uh, affected? How will our food service be, you know, affected? Uh, how will our transportation be affected? In rural districts like these, decisions carry additional burdens. While suburban and urban districts usually have reliable internet access, not all residents here do. That's kept administrators from embracing one-to-one -one technology, and the lack of coverage is something that could end up affecting students. The fact of the matter is that e-learning is not something that's currently available to our district, and so if, if we had an emergency situation that would require schools to our schools to perhaps postpone classes or cancel classes for a period of time. Uh, I believe our option would be, unless we could get an emergency waiver from the state uh, that would allow us to come under that, you know, 184 day guideline, we would certainly uh, be in a position where we would simply add days uh, to the end of the year once the, the concern and once the threat had passed. In addition to the challenges associated with e-learning, the district is also concerned about how students will receive meals if they do have to close. While Avon has established a plan to keep providing students with meals, officials here say many parents drive from long distances. Plus, many work during the day, so coordinating such an effort becomes complicated quickly. Despite those challenges, Janes believes the district is prepared, and he wants to reassure parents that student safety is their number one priority. We'll be ready using the guidelines that the state has already provided us. Uh, in the event that we do have someone who tests positive for that virus, we'll, I, I think we'll have an effective way to, to handle that. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Brock Turner. And the governor announced a new, a new number of new measures yesterday to help slow the spread of the coronavirus, among them allowing Indiana schools to close for 20 days for the rest of this school year. Now, Holcomb is also discouraging non-essential gatherings of more than 250 people in sight, such, such as churches, stadiums, auditoriums. The announcement came as the NCAA and the Big Ten called off basketball tournament games scheduled for Indianapolis. And then a worker at Fiat Chrysler's transmission factory in Kokomo tested positive for the coronavirus.